The back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram below shows t data from two samples. The corresponding populations are assumed to be identical in shape and spread. Use the Tukey quick test to test at the 5% significance level the hypothesis that the populations have the same average. So one of the, the assumptions here is that the populations are identical in shape and spread. So spread would be standard deviation. Um, but not necessarily, it's, it's not necessarily true that the two populations have the same averages. Now, in particular, the Tukey quick test is used to test the hypothesis that the population means diff medians. It's actually that the population medians differ. So this is the particular average the Tukey quick test is most used to compare. So when it says average, usually we're talking about um, the average being the median, not the mean. So the median is one measure of an average and the, me and the mean is another measure of an average. So let's look carefully at our two sets of data, our two samples. So what does this left data mean? The smallest value is 36. So I'll just write this out just to get an idea of what's going on. The smallest value is 36. The next smallest value is 40. Okay, so this stem here is 4, the leaf is 0, so that means we have a value of 40. Um, the next highest is 43, so you can see that these are given in ascending order. Then we have 46, uh, we have another 46, we have 48, then we have 50, uh, 52 and so on. And the last value is actually 62. Now let's look at the other sample. What's the smallest value? Well, the stem here is 4, and we have a leaf of 4, so that corresponds to a value of 44. The next largest is 51. Then we have 55. Then we have another 55, 57, etc up to 59, then we have 61, 64, 69, then 72, 74, and finally 81. So you can see the first step in the procedure for the Tukey quick test is to arrange the observations in each sample from smallest to largest. Well, that automatically happens to be the case from our stem and leaf diagram. The second step is to determine the smallest and largest observations of the combined samples. So if we were to combine these two samples together, what is the smallest observation? Well, you can see that it's 36. 36 is the smallest from the whole lot. And we want to look at the largest observation as well. So the largest observation in this sample is 62, but the largest observation in the other sample is 81. So the largest observation from combining the two samples is 80, 81. If both of these observations, that is 36 and 81, come from the same sample, or if either the smallest or largest observation occurs in both samples, Tukey's quick test is not appropriate. Now that's not the situation here. We can see that both of these observations come from different samples. Um, so we don't, we don't have that problem. So we can use two keys quick test. Anyway, you can, you can really ignore that. That's one of the assumptions that doesn't apply here. If the smallest and largest observations occur in separate samples, that'll be the case if we're asked to use two keys quick, quick test. Um, we designate the sample with the smallest observation as S and the sample with the largest observation as L. So the sample with the smallest observation is S. So this sample is called S and this one is called L. So S contains the smallest observation, which is 36. L contains the largest observation from the combined samples, which is 81. Now, the third part of the procedure is to let TS equal the number of observations in sample S that are smaller than the smallest value in sample L. So here is sample S. So we want to look at all the observations in sample S uh, that are smaller than the smallest value in sample L. Well, the smallest value in sample L is 44. 
So we want to count the number of observations in sample S that are smaller than 44. Well, you can see that there are three of them, 36, 40, and 43. 46 is greater than 44, so we just have these three here, and that's TS. TS equals 3. We can get it from our stem and leaf diagram as well. The smallest value is 36, next smallest is 40, next smallest is 43, and the next is 46. Um, so you can see that those three values are underlined. These are the three values that are smaller than the smallest value in sample L, which is 44. So 43 is smaller than 44. So that's TS. In step four, we have to look at TL, which is equal to the number of observations in sample L that are larger than the largest value in sample S. So what is the largest value in sample S? Well, that's 62. So how many values in sample L are larger than 62? Well, we can get it from our stem and leaf diagram because I haven't written out all the values here. So what value? Well, we have 61 here. That's smaller. We don't want that. 64 is larger. You can see that that's underlined than 69. And of course, all the rest. So how many values is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So TL equals 5. The next step is to calculate T which is just the sum of these, TS plus TL. TS um, plus TL equals 3 plus 5, which is 8. Now, before I go on to step 6, I want to discuss hypothesis testing in this context. H subscript 0 is the notation used to denote what's called a null hypothesis. That is the hypothesis that the population medians are similar, or the same. Well, similar, the same, inner, about the same. HA is that the population medians differ. So when we do a hypothesis test, we're assuming that H0 is the true situation, that the null hypothesis holds. In step 6, we see that if T is larger than 6, 9, or 12 for these uh, levels of significance, then we reject the null hypothesis. Now, we'll usually be working with a level of significance of 0 0.05. So, in other words, if t is larger than 6, then we reject the null hypothesis. We can see that t is larger than 6. We got a value of t, which is 8. That's greater than 6. That means that we reject the null hypothesis, and we conclude that the population medians differ. Now, just to explain the meaning of our level of significance, as I said, 0.05 is, is the level that you will normally work with. Um, alpha, a level of significance denoted by alpha equals 0 0.05 means that if the null hypothesis is true, in other words, if the population medians are similar, then the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis H0 is 0 0.05, in other words, 1 in 20, which is quite a small probability. Um, so we're unlikely to reject the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is true. That's what this means, because it's such a small probability. It's 1 in 20. What is more likely is that the null hypothesis is false. If the population me medians differ significantly, then the null hypothesis is more likely is, is probably false. So the null hypothesis could still be true. You know, there's a 1 in 20 chance that we will reject the null hypothesis, y you know, given that, that, you know, if it's true. So it's not an exact science, of course. We might have to do further testing. 